Eni, Eni, Eni Sasa MMA. Any stuff I am here on the field now. Seal up, seal up. Seal up. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hello, I'm uh, Jack, this is Sharpie. We are black belts out of uh, Marcus Sardini's Jiu Jitsu in Glasgow. Uh, today, guys, I'm going to go over the, the Z Lock. Okay, this is a move that was created by Eddie Cummings, uh, in my opinion, kind of mastered by Gene Ocasio. Um, this is going to be a kind of brief rundown. I'm going to go over some of the mechanics, I'll go over the basic finish, and I'll talk a little bit about the, the lateral knee bar, which is like a really important part, I think, of the kind of Z Lock. Um, if you just want to skip straight to the breakdown of the actual move, then just use the kind of chapters below and skip ahead. Um, I will leave a bunch of references as well. I'll leave some of my favorite Z-Lock finishes, the ones that I can find on YouTube. I'll leave a link to Ginny's uh, instructional on uh, the Z-Lock, which I think is by far the best resource, kind of thorough resource that you can get um, on the Z-Lock. And I'm going to leave a really good defense that I saw on Nick Ortiz's channel as well, down there as well. So further study, you should have plenty to go on, okay. Um, so before I do the actual breakdown, I'm just gonna go through some of the mechanics and why I think the Z-Lock is getting so popular. Okay guys, so um, when we are looking to control someone in a leg entanglement, there's various tools that leg lockers will use, okay. The first one I want to go over is going to be the, the concept of putting a bend in the leg, okay. So we see this all the time from places like 50-50 and uh, like outside ashi or diagonal ashi. In this position here, as soon as I turn Sharpie's knee, because there's a nice bend in the leg, hands free, it's really quite difficult for him to get out. If Sharpie tries to explode this way, it's very difficult for that to happen. Reason, I put a bend in his leg, okay? If Sharpie stands up for me, and we look at uh, positions such as the backside 50-50, it's a very similar concept. The straighter Sharpie's leg goes here, the higher chance that he's going to be able to explode out and leave us behind, okay? So that's the first mechanic that leg lockers will use um, in these positions, okay? Downside is, in these positions, we don't always have what we would call double trouble. Um, double trouble is something that we typically see used in the saddle, okay? So again, if I take Sharpie into the saddle, you can see here that I don't have a bend in the leg, so it'd be quite easy for Sharpie to start turning and slipping that leg out, okay? So in positions like the saddle, one of the tools that we can use to try and stop Sharpie from escaping is to achieve this double trouble, capture the second the leg. And now, without a bend in the leg, once again, it's really quite hard for Sharpie to escape, okay? The downside of this is that whilst I'm using my arms to achieve this double trouble, it's really difficult for me to actually get onto the heel and finish, okay? And if I throw this leg away and go looking for it, there's a high chance that I'll lose him, okay? Now, obviously, there is loads of different ways that we can uh, we can get rid of this leg. We can go over the top and start passing it across. We can bring our feet together, start coming up, and start trying to unlock the feet that way, using our body weight here. But for me, the Z-lock gives us the best of both worlds, okay? If I go into a Z-lock here, and I pass this leg across, one, I've now got a bend in the leg, and two, I've got my double trouble, okay? So this is why it is so, so difficult to get out of a Z-lock. Not only have you got a bend in the leg, you're also getting this double trouble. And even better, because I've got this foot on the outside, the problem I had in the saddle was that I didn't have a free hand to apply the finish. Here I do, okay? By placing my hand onto my shin, I can reach back, and I've got a free hand, I can maintain that double trouble whilst getting the finish, okay? Okay guys, so that's why I think that um, the Z-Lock gives us the kind of best control. It blends together several different concepts that we would use as, as kind of leg lockers, okay? So um, now I'm gonna go into the breakdown. I'm just gonna show you how it's done. And then I'm gonna touch upon um, the lateral knee bar, which is gonna be an option when Sharpie straightens his leg or the primary leg to try and get out, uh, which I think is a bad idea. And I'll go into why I think that, okay? So we're gonna start We'll just start in like a very basic single leg X, okay? I'm not gonna go over entries in this video. Um, if I get a good, some good feedback from this video and you guys want entries, I can shoot a separate video. 
uh, showing how I would get into these positions. But we're starting a single leg X, and I want you guys to hit a reap, okay, or like a diagonal ashy, okay. From here, because I've got that bend in the leg that I was talking about earlier, I don't have to use my hands to keep Sharpie here, okay. As long as that bends here and I'm squeezing nice and tight, it should be very difficult for him to escape. This frees my hands up to reach. I like to grab one at the ankle and one at the knee. And I'm going to pull, pull, pull until Sharpie's knee goes over my knee, okay. Now as soon as it goes over my knee, I like to pull my own knee back and place my feet together, okay. I am looking for my hand over the top of the knee because at this point, as I'm pulling, Sharpie might try to pull his knee back to his chest, okay. So I want this grip. So I'm pulling, bring my feet together, and I go over the top, almost like an Achilles style grip. But for this one, guys, I don't, I'm not trying to break Sharpie's ankle just now, so I don't need to be nice and low. I'm going to go right up tall, up in the calf, okay. My own hand is looking to reach onto my shin. I know you, you can go here as well, both are okay, but I'm looking to go on the shin usually, okay. From here, guys, this is like super difficult to get out for the reasons that I spoke about. Double trouble's been achieved, and I've got a nice bend in the leg. If Sharpie tries to move, it's really tough. Okay, we're very much connected to each other. Okay, guys, your next step from here is you want to lean away from the leg that you want to break, okay? And the leg that you want to break is the leg that you've put that bend in. Okay, guys, um, a really important point here, the Z-lock is going to attack both the hip and the knee, okay? So um, in order for this to work, I really can't allow Sharpie's right knee, the, the one that I'm kind of not attacking, if you like, to start moving away from me, okay? I, I've see, I see lots of people kind of doing this kind of stuff where like they're going for the Z-lock, but there's a lot of movement in this far away hip, okay? The more that hip's able to move, the less Sharpie's going to feel it when I start to attack the Z-lock, okay? So, so with this kind of shitty grip just now, I tried to finish the Z-lock. It's going to be a long, long time before Sharpie feels any kind of pain, okay? So I want to be as tight as I possibly can here. I want you to like actually like kind of lurch your back over and I want you to try and prevent any movement on this hip, okay? If Sharpie tries to move, I'm kind of using everything to not allow that to happen. Think about when you're finishing the Z-lock, you want his two hips to just crash together. It's a horrible thought, but trying to crash his hips together, okay? The more his hips go this way, the less he feels it. Okay, so I'm pulling everything in, and now I'm gonna try and fall onto this side, okay? Um, if I allow Sharpie to go to this side, it makes it very difficult later on for me to start um, pushing his foot towards his shoulder, which is my aim here, okay? So I'm using these two feet. Bring the feet in, the more you put your foot out, the harder it is to, to fall onto my left side. So bring your feet together. Everything's so, so tight, I fall. And now I'm here, okay guys. If we have the bend in the leg, we're going Z-lock. Okay, later when we see a straight leg, we're, we're gonna go lateral knee bar. But here, I've managed to maintain that bend in the leg. So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm reaching for the foot. You can go like underneath with your forearm, or you can like hold the end of the toes. I, I like to go to the end of the lever because I feel like I'm stronger here. But you can go here as well. And all I like to do guys is picture taking their toes to their shoulder, okay? This is another mistake that I see quite a lot is guys just push, okay? Sharpie's leg is designed to bend this way. This isn't gonna cause any pain. We want to push up towards the shoulder, okay? So I'm reaching down, pushing up, and I'm going towards the shoulder. Okay, guys, so just one more time. We can start in this. However you happen to get here, okay? I was just doing it from a standard single leg X. You could do it from the saddle if you're able to pass this over. Just get into this kind of diagonal ashy or reap position, as, as people call it, okay? If that bend is in the leg, you don't have to worry about holding this. He's not going to go anywhere. Let's freeze our hands up to go one, two. Just make sure this grip is above the knee. You grab like this, he's going to bring his knees to his chest. And he's going to pummel that leg out. So you go one, two. He tries to do the same thing. It's surprisingly difficult because of that grip above the knee. I pull, pull, pull. And then I'd like to bring my knee up. Connect my feet, and I'm going to start to lean, lean, lean to the side that I want, okay? Now, this hand is free. This is like the big benefit of using a Z-lock over the saddle, in my opinion. If we had double trouble in the saddle, this arm would still be busy, um, kind of deal, like keeping his legs together, okay? So for now, I can take this hand off. If Sharpie tries to move, he's stuck. I can take this hand. I'm going to the end of the lever, 
and then I'm looking to push his toes towards his shoulder. Okay, again, guys, don't push straight down. You can see how his knee is just bending like a normal knee would. We actually want to push the foot up and put pressure either on the hip or on the knee, whatever comes first, okay? One last tip, guys. Pull your knee down as you do this, okay? Um, try almost like you're trying to touch your knees together. Okay, so we're going here, and we're going to get the tap. Cool. Okay, right, so final thing I'll talk about is going to be the lateral knee bar. Okay, so just before I show this, this for me is the most dangerous leg lock you can ever do. Um, the reason for that, I, I think, is in all the instances I've seen where someone's had their leg broken from a lateral knee bar, they have not had a chance to tap. Um, if you watch, like the famous examples would be Joseph Chen's win on uh, who's number one. Uh, maybe even more famous is Liam Crellinson on the B Team channel. When the guy got his leg broken in both of those instances, it was just a surprise more than anything, um, which isn't, I don't think you get that off with heel hooks. I think when guys get their legs broken with a heel hook, they knew it was coming. They chose to try and fight out and unfortunately it just didn't work out for them. But with the lateral knee bar, I feel like it's just you feel absolutely fine one second and then you're fucking straight to the hospital the next. Um, so for that reason, I don't use this in the training room, but I think it's important that we know about it because it's uh, clearly very effective. Okay, so let's look at it. So we're in this Z-lock position, and I think like if you were new to Z-locking, you could be forgiven for just thinking, okay, he wants this bend in my leg, um, and he wants to put my foot up here. If I just straighten my leg, then he obviously can't do that. And you're actually, you, you'd be completely correct, right? I can't do a Z-lock with this straight leg, okay? But anytime someone gives us this, it opens up our ability to basically cave our leg inward and start looking for a lateral knee bar. Okay, so I'm going to do this like as, as gently as I can. Okay, so you want to, when, when you get hit with this, when you see a straight leg, and again, guys, I'll probably save this for competition. You don't want to be doing this to your training partners, in my opinion. We're looking to kind of scoot ourselves back. So it'd be like a little shrimp back. And we're trying to line our hips up with the side of the knee. Okay, so this as gently as I can, because I'm very scared of this move, but like, I want to go to like here. And then for this, like for this one guys, we're not going to go to the foot, because we're not like, if Sharpie defends the lateral knee bar by punching his leg or kicking his leg through, then we can immediately go back to the Z-lock, right? So if, if you can, if I start applying this like lateral knee bar and you kick through, this should be a great time for us just to lock back up and start looking for that Z-lock again, okay? But if we are looking, I'll do this very, very gently. If we're looking to finish the lateral knee bar, we're not going to the foot this time. I just want you to almost like hug your own knee and we're going to use that to basically put, like using this part of my leg, as much pressure on the side of the knee as possible, okay? I'm trying to bring my knee from here down to here. With the assistance, usually, you don't always have to do this, but I like to do it with, with the assistance of my hand, okay? You can also just kind of cover here and use your leg. It's a little bit nastier if you go here, I think, because you can help your leg along the way, okay? And just like, very, very gently, just start bringing pressure down, and we get a lateral knee bar, okay? It's just one more time, guys. You've achieved, so if you kick through for me, please. We've achieved a uh, kind of Z-lock position. We've got a nice bend in the leg. Every time I've got a bend in the leg, I'm going straight for the Z-lock, okay? However, some people, I wouldn't recommend this, but some people are going to uh, straighten the leg very, very tight because now if I try and Z-lock, I can't do it, okay? So all I do is I come back a little bit. I try to line almost like the inside of my thigh up with his knee, and I can either just cover the, the foot and, and bring my leg down, or I can cover here, okay? And it is just a case of you're basically just trying to go through the knee here by bringing your knee down. It's just very, very gently. Cool. Um, and like I said, guys, if, if you go and watch, uh, there's actually a good video on flow grappling that I'll, I'll put in the description as well of, I think it's like top five Z-lock breaks or something. If you look at all the instances where people have just had their shit horrifically broken, tends to be a lateral knee bar. I find with the Z-lock, you get a little bit of time. You can kind of think about it and, you know, you can choose to give up and tap. Um, the lateral knee bars that I've seen, guys have felt, it looks like they've felt absolutely fine. And then you just hear a cracking noise and that's their ACL leaving their body, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, guys. So the only thing I didn't really cover, I suppose, uh, is entries. If people like this video, I, that can be my next one. Okay. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. <laughs> it's more awkward, <laughs>